How's it cooking good looking? My name is Amelia and today we are making cataplana. Cataplana is a Portuguese dish and it has its origin in the south of Portugal in Algarve. It's called cataplana because this dish is cataplana and the dish was actually brought from the Moroccans up to Algarve. But over the years, the Portuguese has learned how to master the dish better than anyone else. And my version today is the seafood and fish cataplana. For my cataplana recipe, you need a cataplana dish. You need clams, raw shrimps is preferable, two types of fish fillets and some crispy chorizo. You need Portuguese olive oil, some green pepper and two onions, garden or buffalo tomatoes and a bunch of parsley. You need canned tomato sauce and potatoes, along with a chili fruit, some bay leaves, three gloves of garlic, and some salt for seasoning. You can find the full recipe down below in the description, where you also see all the ingredients and how to do it. One of the amazing things about a cataplana is that you can put exactly what you want to put in it. Whether it's chicken, if it's fish, if it's pork, it's just your creativity that sets the boundaries. So I was lazy today and I got my fish already in fillets, but that doesn't mean that there are no bones in it. And that's why we have to prepare our fish and our mariscos before we start cooking. This is a sea bream. In Portuguese, it's called dourada. And even though it comes in this beautiful fillet, there will still be some bones left here in the middle of the fillet. And the easiest way to remove them is by using a What do you call this? <laughs> I don't know what this is called, but use this, because it's really, really smart. You put your finger over here, and you can actually feel that the bones are going against. So you take your little tool here, and you just Press it out. This is a espada, also known as a scabbard fish. And this is a very common fish here in Madeira where we live. It's a super ugly fish, but it tastes amazing. And it's actually said that no one has ever seen an espada alive because they live so deep in the ocean that once they are pulled up, when the fisherman gets them, they actually die from the pressure. So this fish I've never cut before, but I see that it has a spine in here with some bones in the side. And I can also feel that there is a back spine here. For this piece, I will actually put it in whole. And then once it's cooked, I'm just gonna eat it carefully because I believe that the meat is just gonna fall off the fish. So if you have a very good uh, eye to movement technique, you could just go ahead. I don't have that. So I'm just gonna do this. And then, you know, no fingers are gonna uh, die in this process. Now that our fish is prepared, we are gonna prepare our vegetables. And this is the easiest thing ever because everything just have to be rinsed and chopped. Peel the potatoes, peel the onion. I'm gonna cut my potatoes here because they are gonna be layered in our cataplana. You can cut them like a quarter of an inch if you want, but I kind of like my potatoes super overcooked because I love the texture. The onions also are just cut into rings and they can be also the thickness that you prefer. Again, I like a quarter of an inch or half a centimeter. Now we're gonna cut the green pepper here. I am gonna bring a little bit of heat into my dish with a nice chili fruit. It's not too spicy, this one, but it still has a little bit of heat. Now to my garlic, also in slices. These are garden tomatoes. And even though they might not look like the prettiest tomatoes on this planet, I tell you, a real tomato that hasn't been spoiled with poison looks like this. But they sometimes are very pretty when you cut them. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where the party gets started. First, a little bit of our Portuguese olive oil. And then now, think of your cataplana as a lasagna. You assemble it layer by layer. So I'm gonna start with some onion because flavors from onions, I love it. So that's why I have so much onion. Then I'm gonna lay out a little bit of my pepper fruit. 
my potatoes and don't forget the garlic. My organic garden tomatoes. They give such a nice color, look at this. Our beautiful fish that I also need to sold a little bit before I add it. I do think Catablana looks like a little piece of art. It's so pretty. Then we have the Pringles of the sea, which is a meshuas, also known as clams. If you don't have too much fish, but you are a lot of people, it's not a bad idea to add more potatoes or something. You can also make the dish even cheaper if you do want to make it, but you think it's a little too expensive. Because here in Portugal, fish can be cheap, but in the rest of the world, it's not the case. It can be very expensive. My cataplana has reached a point where it's kind of stuffed and I have to stop adding stuff now. But I will, however, use my bay leaves. This is something that I don't think is traditional to add on your cataplana, but I just love the flavor so much. One of the reasons why I wanted my fish and my uh, clams and everything small is because unfortunately I could only get my shrimps already cooked which is not the ideal, you want them fresh. So by having smaller pieces of fish and smaller pieces of potato, you reduce the cooking time so that these are not getting overcooked. Looks like my shrimps are having an AA meeting here. I'm gonna use some port wine and we're gonna use some vinho verde, which is called green wine. It's a Portuguese variety of white wine that is made with a certain type of grapes and it's very acidy and fresh which is perfect for our cataplana. More or less a cup of vinho verde. Then you have something to enjoy while you're eating too. These are gonna fall down in the dish once it's done. This cup I'm gonna fill with water and I'm also gonna splash the water over. And then we are ready to chop the chorizo and put it on top. The only thing I wanna do now is that I wanna chop up a little bit of parsley. Cause I love it and it tastes amazing. And I'm actually gonna put everything in, even the stalk. Just gonna chop it finely. Parsley stilts, they actually give a lot of flavor. And I don't understand why we're not using it more. It's delicious. Here we go. She is ready to be turned on. Maximum heat, 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. I really hope it's juicy, almost like wet, and that everything has been cooked fairly. And most importantly, tastes like a dream. My Catablana looks exactly how I wanted it to look. It has all the beautiful colors and it smells amazing. It has the moist down here as I want it. This is not traditionally done in Portugal. I just love lime. So that's why, of course, my little lime here has to go over, you know. Look at this, oh yum. Oh my God. I think some people would say that there are too much juice, so it's almost like a soup, but I really like it that way. One more time, oh baby, one more time. Oh baby, one more time. Yeah, I know it's time to say goodnight. I wanted this with a lot of juice, yeah. And that is because you are gonna have a toasted delicious bread on your side when you eat a cataplana. Because we are on Madeira, ours are a freshly baked bolo do caco. If you are somewhere else in the world, just get your favorite bread. And of course, with a delicious glass of wine, because who is eating seafood without white wine? I mean, come on. Can I try my food now? Yes. Oh, da, da. oh, I'm gonna start with the dourada. Oh my God. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I am so satisfied, guys. My fish hasn't even been overcooked. I was a little afraid that it would have been overcooked, but it's not. It maintained all the fats and the juice. You have my fresh tomatoes in here. It's so good. But guys, thanks for watching. If this video made you hungry, please leave a like. If it made you drool, subscribe to the channel. 
And if it gave you ciudades to Portugal, please leave a comment. Thank you for watching.